you know, what is testing with regards to software? What there's there's a lot of strong opinions out there. What we're told we should be doing. Um, I agree. Software needs to be tested. I mean, how can you run something in production and not have tested it? But what does that mean? I mean, when I entered this field back in the late 90s, testing was you built something and you handed it to a test team and the test team had a 27 page document, a procedure, you know, set of procedures that they would walk through essentially to exercise different functionality. If you uncovered a corner case, they updated the procedure. So you know, in the beginning, testing meant, okay, I got this change. I'm going to hand it to somebody else. And I may not hear back from them for two weeks because they may be too busy testing other stuff. So that was what the process was back then. But today we have all kinds of automated testing, you know, test it yourself. We have all, we have a dozen and one uh, assertion tool kits, different kinds of testings. And now you can look at any software textbook from a university program. And what do you have? You, they start talking about different types of testing, unit testing, integration testing, smoke testing, thread testing, end-to-end -end testing, white box testing, black box testing. But what's important in all that? It's like, are we getting caught up in the taxonomy and getting lost in the thing? And, you know, there's this one story I shared. It happened to be uh, one of the chapters in my Python testing cookbook that was published back in 2009, but it was a, sort of a lesson that I discovered was uh, I'd inherited somebody's else's app. I didn't hear it. I went and asked for it because I'd worked on this particular mission critical app that I make, I make reference to in the intro segment. And I'd worked on that app for 10 years and I had managed to hire a new grad that was very talented. So I let him take over the app and I went over and took over this business office app that did not run 24 by seven. And in digging in, I realized that it was nobody had gotten this app working yet. The, the, the accounts receivable department couldn't use this app. And I had adopted a strategy saying, I will not make any contributions without first writing a test case to capture the scenario. You could say it was test driven design. It was I was using the test cases for myself to learn how the software operated. And I can tell you, it took me three weeks to get the first test case even written. This was an app that would ingest an Excel spreadsheet. It would process it. It would look for discrepancies and generate an outcome. Uh, the way the app had been developed, there were various things where basically the file had to be in a certain folder. I didn't know that when I got started. So I, I, I like spent two days just trying to figure out where is it even looking for the file. And then the end results were in the database. So I had to have a file in a certain location and then I had to go look for the results in a certain table in the database. And that was very difficult. That was very challenging. And I'm, you know, that that multiple times I almost gave up. But I said, no, I, I made this commitment. I'm gonna hold to it. So I wrote, you could call it an automated test, you know, it's not what you're thinking of in standards, but it was like it was a J unit based test case. And it took like five minutes to run because it went found this gigantic file with 10,000 rows of Excel spreadsheet data. It sucked it into the algorithm, it did all of its processing and man mingling of the data, what have you. And then it went and wrote it out to a Oracle database. And then finally, I had to write code to connect to Oracle, uh, go look at a certain table and try to figure out if the results were correct or not. And I looked in there and well, the results were correct for what I was testing because it was that that piece of functionality was operational. So I went and figured that out, but the test case took five minutes to run, which is sounds ludicrous. And I thought, wait a minute, am I gonna write another test case and have it do that too? And I said, yes, I am. I'm going to do that because now I can run this and I have some baseline, some starting point to write one. All the textbooks I'd read were like, well, unit tests should run very quickly. Was this, this doesn't sound like a unit test. I don't know. Is this an integration test? Is this a black box text? Black, black box and white box testing from what I can remember in textbooks has to do whether or not you can see the innards of the machinery. Well, I'm controlling the app. It's not somebody else's code. It's my code, but I frankly didn't know what the code was doing. So I don't know. Is that gray box testing? And what I realized quickly was I really don't care. I just want the test. I need the test to verify if I'm doing it right or wrong or if I'm understanding what's happening. So I realized I don't care if it's a black box or white box test. That was irrelevant. I didn't care whether this was a unit test or not. That was irrelevant. The taxonomy I realized was irrelevant in my situation. What was important was I wanted to figure out if I was doing anything correctly. I, after a few weeks working with this app, I uncovered that they somebody had built a abstraction, a sort of a spreadsheet abstraction into the code that made it where you could dereference by column and row. And I found out all the algorithms it was doing that was sort of unnecessary. I had built up a whole bunch of tests uh, operate, you know, to, to to fix some issues, to make stuff operate. 
and I felt I had a semi decent understanding of what stuff was happening. So I started ripping that abstraction out. I took it out and found out that the app sped up by a significant amount. It was an unnecessary abstraction. What is it? Uh, uh, Yagni, you ain't going to need that or you aren't going to need it in the proper English. So there's no way I would have done that on day one to pull out what looked like a, a critical abstraction baked into the stuff. But once I had a, an operational knowledge and I had a sufficient suite of test cases, I pulled it out and it it didn't cause any havoc. You know, the number the whole number of users using this app was like six, six people or something. So I didn't have this fear of somebody at 2 a.m. was going to use the app and call me in at, after hours. That was never going to happen. So instead, I had a bit more leeway to go work with it because I built up some tests. Well, another situation I ran into, um, I needed to make a fundamental change to the app. Well, I had not run this test suite, which did I mention that at this point, the test suite took 45 minutes to run. Uh, by the time I'd built up a sufficient number of tests, it had gone, gotten up to 30 minutes. At a certain point, it actually worked its way up to an hour to run the entire test suite that I'd built. And I paused and sift it through and made some changes and tweaks. I removed redundant tests and actually shaved it back to 45 minutes. And I, I said, well, good enough, let me move forward. I had not run the test suite for 45 minutes because it took 45 minutes, it got in my way. So I had gone a whole week without running the tests and I decided to make a pivotal change to the software. So I made my tweak and half the test cases broke. I tried to back up, let me tweak this. Let me tweak that. No, I couldn't make any progress. The test cases kept breaking. I couldn't figure out where the problem was that I had clearly just introduced. So at the end of the day, because we had version control, I threw away all the changes, all the work for that day. And I think it was a, a two day effort. I, I think I'd gotten to the end of the second day. I threw it all away. And I said, this is what version control is for. It lets me back up to a point where, okay, here's where I know all my tests are working. So I can do that. Awesome. That was another one of those lessons I really learned. Sometimes it's best to stop. Just stop what you're doing and back up to where stuff is operational. It was kind of emotional for me because I had invested a bit of effort into, into making this pivotal change, but I had to let it go. I came back and I realized, okay, I need to run the test a little more often. Maybe I need to, and I realized also 45 minutes was kind of a little too much for me. So I spent a few days honing the test suite. I got it back down to 30 minutes and that was uh, more acceptable to me. And I got it going and I was able to actually go in and implement this pivotal feature, but it's smaller steps running the test along the way. And I figured out what I'd done wrong. And that was really the whole point of having this test suite was to be able to make progress, was to be able to, it's like you're, you know, climbing up the face of a cliff and you're trying to like, you know, get a, get the rope in at this point. And then at this point, so you can make progress along the way. And I felt that it provided me a safety blanket of sorts. Fast forward to a point where I was able to actually take this test suite. The, the, my manager had come to me and said they needed a demo for program management. They wanted to see what I was up to. And I said, well, give me a couple of weeks. So I, I shifted to where I actually had test scenarios that resembled more whole threads of using the app. Uh, it just sort of had managed, I'd managed to get to a point where I could interact with all the systems without going through the user interface. And so I basically had this set of test cases in front of me that simulated what the app was doing. I printed out the test cases and I walked into the presentation and I used it like a roadmap in how to click through the buttons and the menus and so forth and drive the app. And that was the meeting after, after I finished the demo, they were very impressed. And that's when I discovered that six other people had worked on this app before me and never got it functional. It had never been operational for accounts receivable. These people were processing 300 invoices a month from telco providers, Sprint, Verizon, SBC, and like, you know, 101 mom and pop shops I'd never heard of that they, they were having to, they had invoices come in, they had to chew, they had to go through them and look for duplicate charges, discrepancies, mischarged stuff. And it would take them, these six people, an entire month to go through all those invoices. The whole idea of this app was to streamline the process, speed it up and make it more efficient. And so I left that meeting with a better understanding of what my mission was, which is let's get this operational, get these people up and going. So in that situation, it's almost like the testing aspect was sort of secondary. Instead, it was what can I do to bring the value to these people that needed to be operational? And we reached a point where I was able to get them going on the app and they could get the basic stuff going. And maybe, you know, maybe they'd have to go fiddle with it manually later on, but it was giving them a leg up in solving their problem. And we finally reached a point that they could do their whole job with regards to these invoices anyway, through the application. We started meeting once a week in a conference room and I used a slideshow 
I, I pulled up PowerPoint on the overhead. They would tell me a scenario. I would type it down in bullet points. This is something if you go digging in the literature, you'll find it's called acceptance testing. The business user is giving me a scenario. I write it down as bullet points in a slide. And then I, I flip new slide, new scenario. Each slide, I would have like five slides. I would go back to my desk. I would turn the five slides into five test cases. And I would implement it. And at this point, I'd kind of streamlined the process enough. I had enough knowledge of the system that I could sit there and make, I could implement new features. I could make alterations as needed in a very efficient manner. And I could roll out a change in the next week with the stuff that they had asked for. And it was sometime shortly after that, that I remember going by the break room to get a coffee and, and two of them were in there chatting with each other. And one of them had commented, I got four invoices today and I was able to get through all of them. And it, it wasn't even lunchtime yet. This person had got through four of the invoices in like probably what had to be two and a half hours. Now, remember, they used to need, take six people to get through 300 invoices an entire month span. And here somebody could get through a huge, a, what you know, a chunk of it in no time flat. And that's when I realized this is what I'm really here to do. This is what being a pro coder is all about. I'm sitting there trying to make it where they can do their job, where they can implement this. You know, I may have mentioned the story in other episodes of the Pro Coder Show, but that was a real sense of accomplishment in that they don't care about white box testing and integration testing and thread. To, you know, that that's just taxonomy for us, or maybe it's taxonomy for textbook writers or something. It's almost like the whole point is we need to let's build something so that it can serve other people. So we can, if the, te the test cases were serving me, there's other scenarios like what about, you know, this app was in-house, so there was a, no security, if you will. They didn't have to log in and stuff. When you're doing testing and you're, you have a security, like, so you have an app that's visible to the outside world, there's going to be security in there. Something I, I don't, I don't see as much mentioned in all the stuff about the taxonomies of the world and testing is, well, you, for practical purposes, you need to test the success path. That's very easy to see. I need to test that I can get in and view this web page as an authorized user. What happens if you're not an authorized user? What if, what happens if you're unauthenticated? What's supposed to happen? Are you supposed to get bumped to the, to a specific page? Does the thing do that? What if you are authenticated, but you're not authorized? You're trying to access a manager's page, but you're just the customer service rep. What's supposed to happen there? This is where security turns into this combinatorial explosion of, well, I need to test the good path and the bad path and all these various scenarios. And that's something that's very nice to have in some automated testing. And that's why different platforms like I know Spring Security has test constructs to help with that. So here's a test scenario and I'm going to annotate it at with users. I can pick a particular user. I can pick what roles they have and then lay out what they're doing. And so that's where we have another aspect of you know, here's where testing serves another feature in that let's verify it's doing the right thing in the right scenario. Is it doing the right thing in the wrong scenario? You know, what, what is happening there? And I like the, 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 the appeal I get when I look at some of these assertion toolkits, like one of my favorites is assert J is assert J their whole focus is let's make assertions read, read like sentences where it's very clear that you're demonstrating this particular behavior. Now it's very easy. You know, we, we have other things and, and gadgets and thingamabobs to use. For example, we have mocks. Mocks have a certain feature, a certain characteristic where I'm not, I'm not testing this code. I'm testing the behavior of the code, which is kind of hard to differentiate, but mocks afford us an alternative way of testing but there's this trade-off which is the fact is if any of the flow changes you can break you know you can you can break mock tests and what you can do is generate work for yourself that you didn't anticipate you can alter this behavior and it breaks that test because the mock didn't expect that behavior to show up whether that's right or wrong the mock may view it as a breaking change and so we have it we have i've done it myself or i've made the fatal flaw of where i was actually i didn't realize to what degree i was actually i was just testing the mock i was verifying the mock works correctly and it wasn't effectively verifying that the actual system works correctly so testing isn't isn't free. It's not this universal thing that always lets us, okay, well, if I just do this test here, this is going to be the right path to go down. Well, it depends. It's there's, there's cases where, you know, I would go into a system and it's like, oh, look, okay, we've got uh, 20 different test classes that cover it. I'm going to change a fundamental flow of the thing and it's going to hit all of those test cases. So it's like, was, was there a better way to write those tests? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it really is the change I'm doing is that fundamental and it hits all those corner cases. That's a legit issue. Or it could be maybe my test scenario is not not optimal. Nothing, nothing is perfect. So we have to take what we can get, but there's a form of debt, you know, technical debt in there about amongst 
our test cases. And so with all the test cases, are we going to have too much debt to deal with that? Well, that's just, the, that's part of the ebb and flow of being a pro coder. So, uh, you know, that's some of the, that's some of the challenges we have. And, you know, I wrote a blog article several years ago at gregalturquist.com. And I talked about how, you know, I'd become a big fan of automated testing. I like capturing tests. And um, I'd actually, my first position ever back in 97, when I got hired into a big shop, um, I didn't write the code. I just tested other people's code. I was manually testing their code, but I started building, I don't know, sort of an automated test. I would print out my assumption of the value, and then I would print out what the function actually generated. And I put them side by side so that I could look at it and see if they were the same value. I didn't, behoove, didn't think of putting some form of assertion logic in there, but I would print out stuff. And I knew I had a good idea when I saw another software developer borrow my idea and put it in her test cases. So I took that as a imitation as the highest form of flattery. But, you know, I wrote this, this blog article where I come to accept that I like having automated testing. I don't subscribe to the, what to me seems like a very extreme example of where it always needs to be, you write the test first, and then you write the, the implementation that satisfies the test case. I think there's situations where that makes sense. And there's situations where sometimes you just have to, you're, you're trying to play with the code first, trying to play around with it, get a feel for it, get a, get it something going that you like. And it's like, okay, now that I like this, let me, let me capture this with some tests, you know? And so I'm not, I'm not a big fan of what's called test-driven design, which is a very, a very specific uh, flavor of testing. So I think there's sometimes that can work and sometimes where it doesn't work, but, and some people have other strong opinions on that. So what I'd like to know is what's your opinion on testing? You can put it in the comments wherever you're watching this. 